So in this video, we're going to look at planning a feeding program. So it's actually a very short um, one, this, uh, especially this slide. So basically, your feeding program is all about um, measuring the requirements of farms and livestock and ensuring that the right crops containing the right nutrients are produced. So what they mean here is usually on a farm, the farmer should know that whether he has cattle, how many he has. Let's say he's got 200 cattle. Let's say he's got pigs. Uh, let's say uh, 400 pigs and he's got some sheep and he must know the amount. Let's say 200 for argument's sake again. So you should know his type of animals and you should also know their requirements, meaning are they still in production? Are they produced? Producing wool, meat, eggs, whatever is it's something that the animal is producing, meaning um, they will have to have extra pro protein maybe in their feeds to enable them to produce these products. Or as well, um, are there animals that he just wants to keep alive? All the animals that are not reproducing or producing anything at the moment, but just needs to stay alive during winter and then hopefully in summer they can produce something. So in that case, then the animal, oh, sorry, the um, farmer will just have to keep them alive. So I have to get a maintenance ration, something like high carbohydrates or fats. So keeping this in mind, um, the, the last bit of that sentence it says, in, and ensuring that the right crops containing the right nutrients are produced, this means that the farmer then should know if he is supposed to give his animals a high protein diet. Maybe he should um, uh, plant crops like uh, lucerne, which is high in protein, so that he can give all that to his animals. So generally, farmers don't really want to buy bales from other farmers or they don't want to buy maize from other farmers. They want to produce their own. That's the point of the farm. So he has to make sure that he plants the correct crops to give the necessary nutrients to all his livestock. So that's basically what this feeding program is about. During the entire year, he should know when and when he should give what and how much to his animals. So there is two um, types of rations, maintenance ration and a production ration. That's basically like I just said. So for maintaining the animal, it's just to um, feed the animal feed that keeps them alive. And specifically, your maintenance ration usually has a wide nutritive ratio that is over one to six. So in the previous lesson, uh, we talked quickly about all the, the uh, calculation one. We talked about the uh, nutritive ratio, calculating that. So the nutritive ratio usually figures out the amount of nutrients in a feed, whether there is compared to protein. So how much carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, and minerals do we give compared to protein? So when there is a wide nutritive ratio, like which is over one to six, it means there's more carbs and fats, for example, in the food, and it has low protein. And that's just to maintain your animals, keeping them alive. Then secondly, for your production ration, this allows animals to produce products like eggs, wool, milk, and meat, things the farmer would like to sell. So when the animal is producing um, certain products like this, we usually give them something with a narrow nutritive ratio, so less than one to six, which means we're actually giving them a high protein diet. So we're giving them less carbs, less fats, less protein, uh, not protein, sorry, uh, less vitamins, minerals, and so on, but more protein because these animals need to produce something. They need more minerals than they will normally need or um, nutrients that they will normally need, specifically protein. So they need that protein to produce whatever products they need to make. Okay, then it's also still based with your feeding um, programs and so on. We, I need to explain you guys the Pearson square method. So it will become evident why it's called the square method. Pearson probably is the um, researcher that figured this method out. So it basically determines the nutritional value of a feed mixture. And here the key term or key phrase is feed mixture. Every time in a test they talk about a mixture, they always probably want you to use the Pearson square method. They will not ask you use this method to figure this and this out. They will just tell you figure out um, how much of a certain feed or two different feeds was, were mixed, figure out what is the, ra um, the ratio between the two feeds or the feed mixture. So the key here is the word mixture. So here's an example um, of one of the questions you can get um, in the exam. A farmer wishes to give his cows additional extra feed that has a protein value of 18%. So you want the feed at the end of everything to be 18% protein. He wants to mix two feeds to get this value. So feed A has a protein value of 14%. We know this. And feed B has a protein um, content of 25%. We also know this. So determine the ratio that should be used to mix the two feeds. 
So first of all, what you do is you literally make a square. Okay, so first of all, I hope this shows. I have to use my um, mouse to do this. You do literally make the square first. So this is the square method. And then remember in the previous slide, they asked at the end of this entire process, there must be 18% protein inside the feed. So you put that 18% that you want at the end right in the middle, as simple as that. So this literally gives you guys one mark. So for the business square method, make the square and put in the final protein value you want in the feed, that's 18%. Then they gave you two different feeds, feed A and feed B. It doesn't matter whether you write feed B up top and feed A at the bottom. Just make sure you put the right value next to the correct feed. In this case, it told us that feed A has 14% protein and feed B has 25% protein. So by the way, if you want protein here at the end, you have to keep on using the protein here and the protein here. You can't now all of a sudden use the TDN value, which is all the nutrients together, because the TDN value and the DP are two different things. So protein, protein, protein. Okay, so feed A is 14%, they said, and feed B is 25%. So at this side of the square, we want to figure out the parts, meaning how many pieces of this ration is feed A, how many pieces or parts of this ration is feed B. So how you get to these two values is you literally take this value, I know it's from feed B, but you take this value, bring it up, minus it from 18%. So 25 minus 18 gives you seven parts. So this is the answer for feed A, but yet we use the value from feed B to get this. So this is why the arrow goes up that way. 25% minus 18 gives you seven parts for feed A. Brilliant. Okay, so the arrows here is kind of technically showing in the wrong way, but then how do you get the parts here for feed B? We actually start here, 14% minus 18%. The reason why the arrow is up is so you don't get a minus value, but you can still say 14 minus 18, you'll get the answer as minus 4. We just ignore the minus. So 14 minus 18 gives you four parts. So here we used the value for feed A to figure out the value of all the parts for feed B. So it's just cross over. You literally cross over the whole time. So feed B is then four parts. So to get the ratio then is literally you say feed A to feed B. In this case, fill in the parts. Feed A is seven parts to feed B, which is four parts. So seven to four. That's literally your answer. So when they just want the ratio, this is where you stop. But then I just want to show what happens if they ask something additionally. So now they can ask what percentage of the feed does both feed A and feed B make up? So you still have your square, that everything, nothing changed here, except now we've got the totals of the parts. So to get a percentage, you need to get the total of all the parts. Seven plus four gives you 11. So this is 11 parts of the feed in total. So then to get the percentage for feed A, you take feed A's parts, which was seven, 7 divided by the total, which is 11 parts. So 7 parts divided by 11 times 100% should give you percentage. So, and that is equals 63.64%. Let's say roughly 64%. So 64% of this feed mixture you're giving is feed A. So the majority of the feed, just by looking at this value, is feed A. So you can then just subtract this from 100 to get what feed, the percentage of feed B is. Otherwise, if you want to do the equation, if they ask it for like three marks or something, you have to show the equation. So the percentage of feed B then would be 4 divided by 11 because it's 4 parts for B divided by 11 parts is the total times 100%. Gives you 36.36%. So basically in this ration, the majority of the feed is feed A. Whatever it is, it could be rough fish, it could be concentrate, um, doesn't matter what it is, uh, unless they ask or give an example in another, in another question. But here we see the majority is feed A and the minority is feed B. But this tells you in this mixture what is given the most, what is given the least. Um, we can figure out the parts of this entire mixture. So that's the point of this. And... Yeah, so that's the end of this lesson.